All right, all right, all right. Hello and welcome back to some of you and hello for the first time for others in here. Some of you are already taking one of my classes, CIT 82, uh, Intro to Web or CIT 93 JavaScript. So, but there's also a whole other new group of students here who have not taken, taken my classes maybe, maybe so, I don't know. Either way, welcome everyone. Welcome to CIT 85, HTML and CSS. I used to teach this class all the time. Um, and then I handed it over to another faculty here on campus. And recently, um, and then for many years, I didn't teach it because I focused on the 82 class and the programming classes and machine learning and other things. So I'm back teaching it and I'm excited to teach it again. Actually, I'm excited to get back in because I have often noticed when I'm programming, um, web pages uh, with JavaScript is like because HTML it doesn't change that much but CSS changes a ton it's always good to refresh our skills in these areas and many of you this is your maybe your first venture uh, into these topics and if so welcome and we hope to make this an enjoyable experience for you in this video I'm going to try to go over not too much information but enough to get you started in the right direction so in this case, I'm actually have Canvas open. I'm at the first item of the course, which is the attendance item. And actually, you're already here, which is why you're right, uh, watching this video from me. And so one of the things you can know right away is this is a there's no textbook cost here. Uh, I, you, I'm going to be using two courses from Dave Gray. Dave is actually a professor as well, and he's really great. And then I have a link here just to his YouTube. We're going to be using two courses, four hours of HTML and 11 hours of CSS, which tells you really if we were to <laughs> weigh HTML and CSS uh, uh, proportionally, it'd be HTML and CSS, right? Because truth is HTML good to understand, understand the structure, understand uh, attributes, understand how pages are structured, but it's really how we style those things that is the most important. So that's what we're going to do there. Uh, that's his, and, and the thing I would recommend, and I'll try to <coughs> hit some of the highlights today of the syllabus, but definitely go through and read the syllabus. Um, look at, there's not a lot in there. I'm not one of those who provides a huge syllabus. I do a relatively concise one, but there's some important things in there like due dates, uh, the end of the semester, uh, those types of things that you could ask me about or just uh, make sure you understand. As I said before, this course was is set up um, to be sequential, which means you need to work through each item. It won't let you move forward until you complete that item. And I do that because this class, like many technology skill acquisition classes, do require you to have that pr uh, building, right? We're building a scaffolding, so to speak. Like if you were to look outside of a, a building, somebody's building, and you see this scaffolding, well, that's what we're building up uh, to give you that skill base, but we have to start and build up. So that's why I do it sequentially. So the goal of this course is for it to be enjoyable for you, honestly. It's work, I'm not going to lie to you. <clears throat> Anybody will tell you who's taken my classes that they are work, but I really hope that they are work in the sense of you learning every time you do work for this class. I really, when students talk about busy work, it, it, for an instructor, we roll our eyes and we're like, no, it's not. It could feel that way. I get it. But sometimes busy work is really just work to give you to learn the skill in the class like this. So I actually did this, uh, decided today I'd go over and ask chat GDP. So I'm guessing everyone here has at least heard about the major explosion of chat. Now chat has actually chat GDP or derivatives um, thereof have been around for a while. I mean, I've been, I've taught machine learning before and a couple of years back uh, relatively early on. So it's not that it's new. It's just that it gained to a point to be more u more helpful, more usable. Now I'm sure you may all probably have a different opinion about it, but I thought I'd ask today. Like I thought I would ask chat, why learn HTML and CSS? Really, why do it? 
And fundamentals of web development. If you're going in there, you really, this is like the basic skills. You gotta have, no matter what you intend on doing, whether it's, and you may not even know these terms and that's okay. If you're doing front end, you're doing back end, you're doing full stack, or you're doing something else. Most likely, even if you're not doing web pages or web development, if you're gonna be in this industry, you're probably gonna have some time that you need to be able to write or understand or modify HTML and CSS, hands down, okay? So um, this is a good starting point. That was the point. And the career opportunities, they are still there. Um, absolutely, right? And, you know, enhanced, and that's the other thing is like, there's something for me, the more I code, it really lights up my brain. There's something about being able to focus, do something, uh, and it also enhances my creativity and my problem solving. These things are true, I have found in my uh, experience. Versatility, uh, independent learning and projects for sure, right? Empowering and cost savings, there's so many ways. The community and the resources as well. Um, these are all good reasons to um, learn HTML and CSS. So um, I'm sure you all have different reasons you're here. Um, some of them may be this is your pro uh, your selected program, right? You're going to be getting a degree in one of our web degrees. Welcome. If you're here just because you think based on what I'm going to do, I want to have some experience. Maybe you're just here to see if this is something you want to do. So. Again, my goal is for you to enjoy this class and to walk away saying, I now understand how to code HTML and CSS to create a site. If you were taking my CIT 82 class, we learned how to create sites with framework like Bootstrap. And those are great things to know how to do, but you really want to take that because that there's reasons why you would use something like a Bootstrap. But ultimately what you want to be able to do is to create a website, have the skill to create a website with no other frameworks. Again, I'm not dissing frameworks. And if you don't know what a framework is, don't worry. But it's basically somebody else has built or somebody's probably more than one have built a library that you basically include in your site that you that allows you to kind of wave your hand and quickly create something. But you're going to learn to do that here. Okay, so what do you need to do next? Okay, the next thing you need to do before you can move on with the course, because the next thing you're going to do in this course is actually get, go to GitHub. If you don't know what GitHub is, I've given a link here and I'm already logged in to GitHub on my account. Create a free account. Now, some of you, many of you probably already have one. Provide me that account uh, as a, your submission to this assignment, okay? If you're new, just go walk through the process. You'll give it some information. And if you see something that looks like it's asking you to pay, no, just know that select free, completely free. GitHub is one of those fundamental skills that um, many people will tell you who are in this industry, learning how to use GitHub, which is, GitHub is the site. What you're using is Git locally in order to version control your code as you code in this class. And so you code locally, generally, and then you do what's called the GitHub workflow, okay? And when you push that code, you're pushing it out to GitHub. And that's how you share co code in this class. And there'll be two kinds of repos that you'll set up. Repos are basically like a folder on GitHub. Now, let me go over here. When you're on GitHub, when you create an account, okay, you're going to end up giving me your username, or you can give me this URL that you see here. And what I will do is I will invite you into a place on GitHub that is just for our course. It's called our course organization. And that's where you will be doing all the coding for this class. Some of you may have done something like a GitHub IO, uh, which is basically you creating a repo that creates a website. But we're going to do all that inside the course. And if after the course you want to use your project uh, for the start of your portfolio, you're totally welcome to do that. You're just not required to. But in this case, we're in, you know, so this user, this is the username. You can give me either just the username or the full URL. And I'll show you how to submit that. So in here, uh, I, I'm not. I have a couple of more topics, so we'll do that in a, in a minute. But what you will do here is you'll hit Start Assignment. 
okay and then you'll just paste again you can either do it this way or you can just give me that username so make sure you've done that because you can't do the next assignment until you've done this part now here's what happens is once you do this then I invite that username into the github organization so if you're coming in here the night something's due just know that you know I'm not gonna probably see it until the next day so doing this step as soon as possible will be helpful because when you go to the next item which is setting up your local dev environment you won't be able to do it until I have invited you and you have accepted the github invite okay really important and there's a series of videos next that go through that process okay now I do run a discord server I've given you a link here and I do have in the syllabus a little write-up about discord but just FYI I run a discord server because you and I most likely have different schedules I typically am an early morning wake up work out sit down grade spend my day doing various content campus related I'm a full-time faculty I'm here on campus BE 113 so I have varying things I do and then I'm done like typically I work a normal day so the reason I do discord if you don't know what it is it's a free site again that you'll have to sign up to accept the invitation that will allow you once you get into discord matter of fact here is um, what it will look like when you come in you won't you will see these text channels uh, but you will only see the start here unless you're already in my class but what you will ask me to do uh, you'll probably land depending on it where you've where if you're just new it'll come into general do read the code of conduct very very important it's up here at the top uh, I do have a code of conduct for discord but what you want to do is a read that code of conduct and B ask me to add you into the class channel and what that is is it's only for the students in this class okay now discord is not required by any means it is encouraged um, I have some students who use it for you know I have some students are very active like in my 93 a little more than the 82 some students tell me they don't need it the instruction and this makes me feel good although I hope it's true for this class is I hope the instruction is good enough that you don't need extra help but there are times you might just want to talk about something here's the thing you can know this is actually the first gen of this course so there means there may be some errors in my instruction I've written all the course content new this is the first you're the first students and <laughs> hopefully that doesn't scare you you're in version 1.0 really probably 0 .0, 0 0.9 something but for those of you that know semantic versioning took my 82 class but anyway so just know that that's the case discord is really intended here's what I want you to know discord is this cord is intended for student to student communication the idea there is that it's really for you all to talk to each other now if I am if it's during the day right and I see it and I, nobody else is replying I'll try to do that but resist the idea of at like mentioning me directly and asking me questions because other students are going to not answer because they're like oh Rio's going to answer that and the idea of discord is for you all to ask each other and interface and if I'm there I will as well okay now also if you want to if you have other questions that you don't want to ask on discord uh, the inbox in canvas is the best way to get in touch with me okay last thing I'm gonna say I think benefits to working ahead in a course like this there are definite benefits to working ahead of a due date and here's the big one is that if you submit I grade every morning I said this earlier if you didn't catch it I grade every morning so when I grade uh, unless something happens right something could happen with my family something could happen in my schedule that I have to be somewhere but most every day my intention Monday through Friday is to grade your work that has been submitted and the reason I do that is so that if you've missed something it gives you the opportunity to fix it uh, once that due date passes right you can still submit work it just is discounted 25% hint make sure you read the syllabus okay so there's a benefit to working ahead so once you submit this assignment you're gonna hit oh sorry 
Let's hit cancel and actually submit it and get that nice little, <laughs> very satisfying sometimes. And then you'll go to the next item. Now on the next item, right now, again, you can't do this item until I reply back saying I've invited you. But once you do, then you're going to come into a, a series of videos that I'm going to walk you through how to set up your local dev environment. Now, I will say these videos recorded were recorded for this semester for my JavaScript class, for my CIT 93 class. So um, when you hear me in the videos talking about, you know, if I mention CIT 93, just know that you're doing the same thing for this class. I just happen to record those videos for that, uh, for that class. So in here, you can also see the calendar, right? But you can see when this is due. Now, it, it, this may be another semester in the future, so just check those due dates. Uh, and, it, and in this case, you will, and I will show you at the end how to submit this one. This one, where you'll give me an actual URL uh, in the GitHub, okay? And so you'll go through and set these things up. If you're a Mac student, I've given you a little bit of help because you will need to install VS Code in GitHub, okay? Uh, but in this case, the last thing you do is learn that all important GitHub workflow. Okay. And then I show you how to submit your uh, URL at that point. So anyway, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, I encourage uh, for sure those students who have never set up dev environments to get this done as soon as possible so you can get help. Uh, most students have managed to get <coughs> through this without issue, um, but um, you know, it works best on, uh, doesn't work on phones, it works on desktops, so Windows desktops, um, Mac uh, desktops work fine, Linux desktops work fine. I've actually used it uh, on particular Chromebooks, but it's not recommended, uh, right? So uh, the sooner you get this set up and get to the end of this assignment, the more you're going to be ready because the lat you do have another assignment for this first week uh, and it is you actually have to do your first code along. Okay. And there's a video I just recorded for that one to show you how to do it. But you can see here, you can't actually work on this because in this case, in this example, this wasn't completed. So you have to move through the course sequentially. All right. Thanks so much for your attention. Time to get going. Give me that GitHub username and get started.